I need to talk to my students. Dang it, I gotta talk to my students. Dang it, I gotta talk to my students. Back to the Angry Teacher channel. I am Richard Williams, the Angry Teacher, and today we're gonna talk about getting the most out of your student teacher conferences. Hang around, we're gonna learn today. So, you know, we all have our, our moments. Sometimes um, students will blow up, you know, for no reason. Sometimes you're in a bad mood. Whatever the situation, um, it could just be about grades. It could just be about life in general. But there's going to be a time when you have to um, conference with your students one-on-one. -on -one. So with that said, here are some tips that will help you figure it out. It's not that many, so it should be easy to follow. All right? Number one. Um, for the in-person conferences, when you are um, in class and you there's a blow up or you're in class and you realize you need to talk to Susie about something or Johnny about something. Now, um, sit next to them and speak calmly. Speak calmly, pace yourself um, out of concern. Not I'm coming for you kind of um, discussion, but I'm just confused. Why did this happen? Why did you blow up on me? Why did, um, why do you think I asked you to sit here so we can talk? All right. Um, like I tell you at my, in my building, I kind of step outside because I don't want other kids to know that there's an issue. So I kind of talk to my kids outside, but if in the hallway, we do the same thing. We don't try to explode on each other. We just, um, calmly talk to each other and get it out there. Um, out of concern. Now, um, it needs to happen at the point of infraction. Now, sometimes it's not possible. You kind of in the middle of a, of a lesson, and then Susie blows up for no reason when you ask her a question. So you can kind of like get to the end of the lesson, and then you kind of call her outside or call Johnny outside, what or, or to sit next to them once everybody else is working. But that's what I do. You know, at the point of infraction, so you remember why. So we have a conversation about that particular thing not because of who you are as a person or what you did last week but what you did right now that caused the stir all right and um, pose questions but when you after you pose the question when they're responding listen and then come up with ideas together um, or suggestions what do you think would happen if you did this on a regular basis why do you think that we could we handle this differently um, is there anything that you're that, that that's hindering you from doing your homework Stuff like this. Post questions, and then when they respond, make sure you respond. You you um, listen to them. Don't just have a, a canned response so that when um, you give it to everybody, and when they they um, are done with the conversation, nothing's really resolved. All right. So those are some things to do for in person. Now let's look at email and text conversations and conferences. By all means, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for the next dope angry teacher video. It's coming out soon. Every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, be there. <laughs> Number two, texts or email conferences. Now, if there is a, and even, you know what? I'll include Zoom conferences with the student. If there is a um, blow up or that happened, or if you're talking about grades, or you're talking about something that happened and it wasn't really a blow up or whatever, choose your words wisely because um, with this new, hovering parent situation or whatever um, is in the background you don't know um, so be careful of what you say and how you say it I'm realizing that the hard way um, connotation um, is different when it's through um, a device because things get lost in translation so be careful about the words you use and how you use them how often you use certain words um, so here's something I, I thought of, um, pause, reflect, respond. Um, I am very impulsive sometimes and I'm, well, not very, not, you know, with, with my responses. So, and that's why, you know, they say I'm extremely sarcastic or I'm the angry teacher. But sometimes I realize I have to kind of pause, have, have the email, have the text message, um, sit for a little bit, maybe a day. Then I go back. What can I say to this child to let them finally understand that their grades matter and they keep doing the same thing that's incorrect? What can I say to this parent 
um, well, you know, um, if I were to talk to the parent, what do I say that we've talk, spoken about, with the, the student and I have spoken about, that the parent will understand? How can I get this child to understand that what she did in class was inappropriate? through a text message or through a, an, an email. So these are things to think about. Choose your words wisely. Make sure that you um, kind of have it sit for a while till you calm down, till you find the right words to use. All right? And the last thing to do for productive student-teacher conferences, um, follow up. After you've had the conversation with the student, Have after you've had the... Um, the text ref, um, responses or the email conversation with the student, go ahead and follow up like maybe a day later, next class, two classes later, let them know um, or ask them, how did the situation um, work out for you? Um, is everything at home okay now or are you dealing with it better? Um, when you broke up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, are things a little bit easier now? Um, or is it still awkward? Check in with them. Let them know that you're still thinking about them even though the situation has passed and you've moved on. If there's a blow up and you're, you were both angry at the time or the student was angry, kind of um, talk to them. Let them know that, hey, I'm not mad at you. We were both angry. You, you blew up. I'm not, it's not the end of the world. We can still move beyond this. Um, if there's a situation where they've told you something about their lives and you see that you know they keep coming to you for different things, make sure there are still boundaries there. Um, don't want you to lose your job for whatever reason. Just make sure that there are boundaries that's been set. Yes, we're, we're close, you know. Um, your mom knows me, your, your dad knows me, I pick you up, I take you to, to, to school or, or you know, um, I give you snacks, you know, like my athletes, I, I feed them, um, all this all this different stuff, but there's still boundaries, you, we're not getting too close, you're not getting, you know, to the point where I'm, you know, um, questioning anything or anyone else is questioning our relationship, alright, so just make sure you follow up with these kids because they're still kids, they're still our kids, we got to take care of them, they're still, um, volatile there's still things that they don't understand there's still things that they don't know and they still need someone in their lives who is outside of the family that they can talk to they can um, share things with so if you are that person if you want to be that person just follow these tips and make sure you follow up with them so they know that you're always there for them okay the teachers lounge is up next and as usual you know I have the dopest kids in the world Check them out. And thanks for coming to class today. I need you to go out there and be great. Hey, let's just go out there and teach. <laughs>